In this video, we'll learn how to use variables with loops in P5.js. Now, this topic might seem redundant since by definition, we need a variable to create a loop. For example, in our for loop here, we're declaring a variable called x. We're starting it at 25 and we're increasing it up to, but not including the width of the canvas by increments of 25. And that's what we're using to draw each one of these ellipses that we see on the screen. So we need at least one variable for a loop to work, but things can really start getting exciting when we combine additional variables into our loop structures. This is where we start to introduce fairly sophisticated interactions and animations. Now we've actually already used a second variable here, and that is the width. That's the built-in system variable that's keeping track of the pixel width of the canvas, which we set in create canvas. So I could update that size, let's say to 600 pixels wide instead of 400. And notice that my loop updates accordingly, drawing ellipses all the way to the right-hand edge. We could also try this with a variable that would change in real time. So let's swap out width and replace it with mouse X. Now I can see that as I drag the mouse left or right, I'll get a different number of ellipses drawn to the screen. So just by changing the upper limit of our exit condition, we can get a totally new interactive behavior out of our loop. We could also try to change the way we increment our X variable. Let's set up a global variable at the top of our sketch, and I'll call this INC for increment, and I'll initialize it at 25. Then I'll use it right here in place of the static number at the increment stage of our for loop. And the results will look exactly the same at first since we're not making any changes to that ink variable. So let's set up a function mouse pressed event below our draw loop. So when the mouse is pressed, I'd like to add one to that increment variable. So as we click the mouse, our increment variable will increase spacing the circles farther apart. Notice that mouse X is still controlling the upper limit of our exit condition. So I'm getting two types of interaction here one based on the horizontal mouse position, and another based on how many times I've clicked the mouse. In line 12, inside my for loop block, I've got this print statement, and that's showing me in the console the value of that X variable as we move through the loop. So you can see I'm counting, starting at 25, in increments of whatever that ink variable happens to be. So the loop is basically giving us this set of numbers to deal with. Right now, I'm using that X value to set the location of each of my ellipses, but I could really use that in place of any other number in my code. So maybe I'd also like to use it to set the diameter of those ellipses. So I can see now I get a pretty substantial increase as we move down that row. Let's go ahead and switch that back to 20. And of course, I could plug that X variable in to any other function that takes a numeric argument. So for example, I could use it to set the fill color in grayscale. So my fill starts with black at the left side of the row and moves to white towards the right. And maybe I could also use the map function to take that X variable, which I know is going to be in the range of 25 to mouse X and remap it to the range of zero to 255. So now I'll get an evenly spaced gradient across my row, no matter how many elements I have. So those are just a couple of the many possibilities of incorporating additional variables into your loop structures in P5.js.